Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hey, Maul, this is version three of the uh, ad read with some of your notes addressed. Uh, brought the background track down a little bit. Uh, tried to stay a little bit closer to your copy, but I mean, you know how it is. I got to play a little loose with it. You know, make sure that it's in my voice. You know, I think it's important that, you know, ad reads be authentic. I mean, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Hopefully you'll like it. Uh, again, it feels like it needs to be said. If I had my gear, it'd probably be a little bit better, but I'm working with what I got. So anyway, check it out. Looking to decompress at the beach after an emotional, devastating encounter with your dad? <laughs> then you need to stop by the mall for Mall Summer of Savings. Hey folks, it's me, Glenn Close here, internationally renowned guitarist and DJ, here to tell you that the savings are out of this world. There's something for everyone. Vintage fishing poles to help you bond with your stepson, remote controls for the man in your life who knows what he wants, and everything is on sale and to scale. That's right, if you happen to have said some racial insensitive things and got shrunk down to half your size mall has got you covered playing some beach volleyball with the boys we can't do that without a net and a ball and if you don't have a surrogate son in the form of a rat oh god don't forget scorecards all of that and more at malls mall and if you mention this hashtag ad you can get 15 percent that's right five zero fifty percent off of your entire purchase and make sure you tell mall that glenn sent you uh it's really important that you mention that just right at the top when you when you see her just let her let her know and uh, hashtag yeah. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, in fact, about four dads from... In point of fact. In, in, point point of, in rumor, I would say. <laughs> about four dads from our world who are flung into a land of high fantasy and magic in a quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, the rock and roll bar DJ dad of the group. Hi, Freddie. Hey, Freddy. everybody. This week's Glenn fact... <laughs> A little one that somebody I- do a mashup. I'm pretty sure Freddie has laughed before every one of his dad facts. <laughs> I think you can literally have just a, just a pure montage and be like, dad fact. <laughs> well, I don't know if you realize this, but that's just a thing anime characters do and Freddie. Those are the only two groups of people. Like almost every single time Glenn's about to say anything, he goes, Heh, and then says the thing. Presumably while also flipping his hair and pushing his glasses up so they go, shing. I love it. <laughs> this is a. <laughs> I can't Fred, just, try, just try to do it without okay, laughing. Okay. No, no, Freddie, you're a beautiful person. No, be who you are. I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> this week's dad fact comes to you from TikTok uh, because this is something that I've done and I thought this was mm-hmm. a great thing that Glenn could do too. Glenn is a member of AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, because he saw TikTok about it once, like Freddie did. Turns out you don't have to be retired to be a part of the AARP. <laughs> this feels like cultural appropriation to me. I'm just going to put that out there. Guess what? If they discriminated you based on your age, they'd be violating Title Seven. But it's not about your age. It's that you're clearly not retired. Well, it doesn't matter there because the There are boomers discounts. getting their fucking moons over my hammy discounts watching you <laughs> and crying. So let's just talk about our discounts that you can get. You got car rentals, cruises, flights and vacation packages, hotels and resorts. Man. It's like you name it, you get hotel discounts. You know here. who needs this is college kids. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, 100%. 20% off Regal Cinemas when I was in college would have been a game changer. <laughs> I mean, with all the discounts that seniors get at movie theaters, like movies are paying them to go watch. <laughs> <laughs> Please watch Marvel. It's good. I swear. Uh, yeah, Regal concessions and Regal movie tickets. Wow. And the concessions? concessions. Yeah, let's see. With this card, you get three dollars off popcorn and soda. Just three dollars. Seven dollars for twelve dollars a year, my friend. Four popcorns and you've. Made your money back exactly audible you guys are sitting there chumps paying for audible you get two bucks a month on movie passing everybody's gonna get an ARP and it's gonna fall out but you do know that we're adding an ad after the (laughs) the intro now so maybe we don't want to just do an ad anyway glenn's Glenn's part of the ARP. i'm signing up right now and it does say when you put in your birthday it just goes some of our benefit providers do have specific age requirements so ARP doesn't but some of the people who give you the discounts do bet you regal does bet you regal ain't giving you three (laughs) dollars off freddy they're gonna see you walking in with that car they're gonna be like turn around sir has glenn ever gotten called out on his aarp card has he ever gotten into well here's what glenn does because glenn just kind of like tips his sunglasses he goes excuse me how old do you think i am and he just stares him down and it's like you know it's gonna 
fucking fight you on that. I was seeing a discussion about parasocial like relationships, and somebody said, like, "I don't know. It's not that like I really like Freddie, but it's just like I feel like Freddie's like a cool guy to hang out with." Well, you now know exactly what it's like to hang <laughs> out with Freddie. <laughs> Beth, Beth, Rainforest Cafe. Oh, uh, you know, oh, I fucking still love. Talking okay, about hey, this. everybody. I'm Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who became a barbarian upon entering the Forgotten Realms. I always think entering his wife too, because of you will. So going down the journey of the seven deadly sins. Honestly, I was a little afraid of saying this one because I feel like this is criminal. This is the worst dad fact. I Ooh. think I'll finally beat Have Henry. Have you met Will? No. No, this is... I don't, honestly, I don't like Daryl after I thought of this one. challenge my power. So uh, this is Daryl's greed. And Daryl's a pretty good sharer. He's not really selfish about most things, but... If you tell me he doesn't go down on people, I'm going <laughs> to kill off Daryl this episode. People is plural, so no, he does not. But oh, okay. oh, he goes down. <laughs> he goes down. Okay. But we're not talking about lust right now. Right. We're talking it's about greed. heroes do. That's what heroes do. <laughs> he eats all the best chips and nachos. What do you mean? Oh, like <laughs> he goes for it. Like only oh, the meat like, on him. Even like though there's fast. that rule at restaurants. And those, like fast. Those fucking like the load bearing. Yes. Like that one ship that got all the guacamole. Like oh, he just becomes yeah. round. He does not give a shit about anybody. He only, he, when it's done, if you look away for more than two seconds, it's just a, it's just a plate of chips <laughs> <laughs> because of Daryl. And he feels no shame. It's just, he hates, he doesn't like tortilla chips, but he loves nachos and that's it. It's green. I literally remember there was one time I finished the nachos. I eat nachos a lot. Lot. Uh, there was one time I finished a nachos where it was like the last chip got the last amount of like stuff and it was just like done clean plate and I was like how did this happen My God. like literally <laughs> the exact he, right he amount is of the chip. chosen one it's like when the bouncing DVD logo <laughs> yeah. hits the corner game button. over like, you're done with restaurants wow yeah, you beat nachos congratulations I literally <laughs> still think about that every time I eat nachos I was like remember that one time I got it right Freddie and then I go yeah I do it was amazing nailed it uh, hey everyone I'm Will Campos I play Henry Oak the Birkenstock Rocket Crunchy Munchy Hippie Nature Druid Dad. Finally got it right. Got it. Yeah. Stumble all over it. Got it in one. The official voice of fictional character Henry, oh. I should say. Oh, I'm a real um, dad. I forgot to say that. Yeah. yeah. Nutted, got a kid. My <laughs> Henry fact this we got a different one, but then Freddie started talking about TikTok. <laughs> so Henry's favorite TikTok is the talk about ticks that he gives on the Geology <laughs> Nature Walk. Nice. At yes. the San Dimas Museum of Natural yes. History. I love it. That's I good. love it. That's good. That's good. I love it. Hi, I'm Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally detached stepfather and rogue. Fun fact about Ron this week. Ron is uh, feeling pretty powerful on the beach after this last episode because actually he thinks that every grain of sand is like some long forgotten like civilization, you know, the whole, er actually we're getting into geology territory here with this, but you know, it's sort of like erosion and stuff like that ground down over millions and millions of years. And he feels a little bit like, a god holding sand in his hand, like, you know, holding different civilizations and stuff like that. Whoa. Fun fact about Beth this week is that she had a hard time coming up with a good Ron <laughs> fact. And does it show? Yes, but we're still early in the episode. Let's see if she can make it up. Uh, quick question, Beth. When Ron looks back on the beach and sees only one set of footprints, what happened yeah. there? One set of footprints. Well, that must have been the one-footed pirate. There you go. <laughs> Guys, I'm ready Jumping to rock. Back Jesus, Jesus Christ. She's in. Whose line pirate. is it anyway? Hi, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. No, I don't know if it's dad fact, but I guess housekeeping. I've mentioned I on the podcast before that this story is coming to an end. And I wanted to be clear, the podcast is not coming to an end. We are going to continue Dungeons and Daddies just with a potentially a new story, but it'll be in the same universe as this campaign. We're calling this campaign currently, we're thinking about calling this campaign, fuck it, but we're calling this campaign Odyssey. So when you think of ah. these four dads in a van trying to find their kids, you can think Dungeons and Daddies colon Odyssey. We're doing it in the same universe? I don't even think I knew that. Oh, Spoiler yeah, no, alert. That's, that's my plan. The same universe. Okay. Like there's going to be some relation to our characters or something. Yeah, probably. Maybe. 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 Yeah, it depends on what you do. Because if all of you, you know, end up dying and getting all of your kids killed, I don't know. Whoa. I, I guess, you know. I, you know yeah. what? I never assumed that the kids could die. <laughs> really? I never. I was like, yeah, I we all might die. I thought the kids couldn't die. I thought the kids couldn't die. kids are. You all oh, God. <laughs> I'm excited that we're coming back for another season. I think that's really compassionate. Oh, we've been of renewed. Anthony. We've been renewed. <laughs> we've been renewed. Yeah, we've been renewed. God, first time for you guys, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I just, it feels really compassionate because most podcasters are euthanized after their first successful <laughs> season. Yeah. Wow. They have to be put down. <laughs> well, I mean, not all of you are making it to season two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got some content. Uh, Drag negotiations. Sorry. To summarize what happened last episode, it was a beach episode. You hung out, basically laid out the structure of. Oops, sneeze is coming. Sorry. Nope. <laughs>
Um, Minority Report. Last up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy oh, shit. The fact that you stopped it from happening doesn't mean it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you hand me a Kleenex? Because you were going to sneeze. There's a snotty handkerchief rolling down a thing that's just got my name He's on it. He's a priest snot. Booger. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's down in the bath just like... <laughs> 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 so last episode, we did a beach episode and sort of laid out that you have actions that you can take to prepare for this final showdown with the Omega Dads. And every action you take is going to take a certain amount of time. And depending on how much time you take, the Omega Dads will upgrade the defenses that they have. So earlier today, I sent you all an email that was sort of summarize some of these rules and let you know some of the stuff you're going to be dealing with. Yeah, the Google Doggo said, I'm fucking going to kill you. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't eaten lunch when I wrote it. Hungry Anthony. Hangry. Hangry, hairy butt Anthony. <laughs> oh, no. Tiny Henry goes to bed <laughs> inside a big seashell. And uh, he goes to sleep and crawls out the next morning and goes, Ooh, I think I grew an inch. No. <laughs> hey, everyone, how's it going? Oh, man, my back hurts. I don't know why I slept in that seashell. I thought that would be fun. Henry, why were you sleeping in that tree? <laughs> I'm not Henry. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. No, you you got the start of this episode. You got it. Henry gets up. He falls out of the tree that the seashell swept up into in the middle nice. of the night. Hell and he goes, yeah. oh, geez. Ow. Yikes. Huh. Well, guys, it was a great luck night last night. I think today is the day we start our plan to go home. Who's with me? None of us are awake yet. <laughs> 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 you but, piece of shit. Like, what's like a sexy tree? Here's you. Yeah, oh my god, you got to sleep in the arms of the sexy Holy tree. Holy shit, yeah, a sexy tree cradled you to sleep last oh my night, god. bro. Dude, Henry parties hard. Things happened between Henry and the tree. As you're saying this to everybody, uh, you can see. No, because I'm going to play in that space. <laughs> I'll All play right. along with Matt. Oh, jeez, looks like everyone's still asleep. Boy, I better go wake him up. Oh, hey, buddy. How's it going, Henry? You, hey, dude. You look, you're looking great still. Oh, that's so sweet. You and Glenn all curled up like spoons together. Oh, that's yeah. Cute. It was cold. It's cold I mean, in what, a hammock. Did you guys have a good conversation last co- night? See, Henry, it's cold in the hammock because you're 360 surrounded by air. That's better to body heat. That's very true. That's a good point. And it looks like, Ron, you, hey, Ron, wake up, buddy. Hey, sorry. You just got to open the uh, the bay windows on my, my sandcastle house. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> it's a uh, Aaron's like, come to bed, honey. It's a, sub- <laughs> <laughs> it's a suburban mini mansion with the driveway. Wow. Um, They'll starts digging up some of the sand because late last night he put together a clam bake but with like vegetables and any food he had so he's digging up the food for breakfast oh well great oh Everybody. wait is clam bake a food thing yeah you know <laughs> okay. clam bake? okay well yeah no i just <laughs> I, I literally just never knew what it really was <laughs> I'm, I'm with i'm with that oh, i've heard that yeah. and i've never you actually known what that means in sand and then you put like coals or other stuff and then usually like what other stuff i don't know anything that makes fire usually you cover it with either like a tarp or leaves, depending on where you're going to cook your food in, and then you just put all the seafood into the pit, and then you cover it and all. You get high, and then it just like bakes over the course of like many hours. I prefer That's the cool. other version. It's great. That's very cool. Okay, so you wake up, Daryl, mm-hmm. and you see Yeet skateboarding across the sand, spraying sand into the air as he does so towards you, and he's holding something in his hand, and he goes, uh, "Hey, uh, Mr. Wilson. Hey, you want carrot or sausage, buddy?" And I pull out a carrot and a sausage from the sand. <laughs> from bank. the sand. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess I'll, I'll do a carrot. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And I throw him a, a carrot. Kid. I like that yeet. So he takes a carrot and he like bites out of it, kind of like Bugs Bunny, and he looks really cool, just like Bugs Bunny. Uh, <laughs> my, 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 my style icon. <laughs> the coolest <laughs> character. He really is a totally different character if I think about him as Bugs Bunny. I love it. I'm just going to if you had to pick the coolest like Looney Tune, obviously it's Bugs. He goes, uh, hey, uh, that's a cool son you raised there, man. That's a yeah, cool son. Well, Glenn, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a cool son. <laughs> yeah, I like, I, I, Grant's cool. I just yeah. want to let you know Grant's cool. Yeah, I know Grant's cool. Yeah, he's the best. He was real nice. He, uh, he apologized to me for <laughs> you trying to cheat me out of a bunch of uh yeah, uh, that was a low point for me, I gotta admit. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. And it's all right. Grant kind of helped patch things up. But I wanted to give you something, so I'm not going to, you know, go fight with you against your, your dads or whatever. But I did want to give you this. Uh, and he opens up his hand, and you see what looks to sort of be like almost like a Super Bowl ring. <gasps> and this was an item sent to us by Griffin Meehan. Thank you, Griffin. And it's called 
T-Bow's ring. Oh, no. <laughs> T-Bow's ring. <laughs> I don't know anything about football, so I Tim Tebow sucks. Blows <laughs> through. <laughs> when you wear it, anything you can pick up and fit in your hand, you can throw in a perfect spiral pass up to 100 yards. That's wow. cool. Love that. That's cool. Somebody will still have to you know, catch it on the other For end. For exactly but you can basically... one season, and then you have to go play minor league baseball. Damn. You're giving this to me? Because Daryl yeah. can already do that, right? I mean... No, Daryl's never been like that great at throwing a football. He puts it on. It's like, really, anything? As long as you can fit in one hand, yeah. All right. I grab a fish from the clam bake. <laughs> okay. Launch that fish, Daryl. Go along, Glenn. I'm just going to watch you throw it if that's okay. cool. Okay, I just throw it. Wait, I cooked this thing. <laughs> I cooked this thing. You already on. left your hand. Yeah, you, you know, throw a, perfect, a perfectly well-cooked fish I throw it, yards. the moment I leave my hand, it's like, no, it's going to get sandy. That's perfectly cooked fish. Uh, the, a hundred yards away, Henry is taking a big yawn, and he says, ah, oh, I've been vegan my whole life. I love it. And a fish as well. He goes, ah, no, but, 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 but Daryl, jeez, come on. Good toss, Daryl. Good throw, though. Yeah, how was it? It was pretty good. <laughs> Do you want to eat more of no! it? No! <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Thank you so much. But yeah, I just wanted to give that to you. It felt like you could use it and let Grant know that, uh, that I think he's cool. Because when I tell him he doesn't believe, I told him last night and he's still yeah, kind of like himself, weird huh? about it. And you look over and he's pointing at Grant and Grant is just staring into the middle distance going like. Uh, 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 hey, morning, Grant. even knows you're up. Uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't sleep. Breakfast catch. And I throw another fish at Grant. Uh, <laughs> and he just goes, uh, and the fish lands right in his hands and he just starts sort of eating it almost robotically. How is it? It's, it's, it's uh, I, I can't, it tastes good, I guess. All right. I guess. Well, everybody just dig in, get some breakfast. When you see Glenn, Glenn is laid down in the sand face down oh, not oh, moving glenn uh glenn oh yeah it's okay i'm just pissing <laughs> love that <laughs> okay because this yeah in the set sa- I, I dug a hole so by the way this is just a little tip this is something i figured out the other day this is glenn talking this is glenn talking i knew where this was going the second you said <laughs> you were lying face down yeah so check it out right if you're ever in public and you need a pee real bad what you can do is instead of like walking into the ocean, right? You can like scoop out a little hole and just lay down face down on top of it and then pee into that hole. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done, cover yourself back up. It's all good. You peed into a hole. You're too close to my clam bake for that to be comfortable. <laughs> are, you, are you are you like leaving right now? I mean, yeah, it seemed like you were, you know, going to train and stuff and do some work and we figured we would get back to the supper bowl and kill us like yeah well like it's been a while since we like stunted on some haters and you all were pretty good but you're you're not real competition mm. well, probably can go house hunting too yeah 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 also i anthony forgot that you also paid them for a house the last time you saw them at the <laughs> supper bowl <laughs> Hey, wait a second. <laughs> What's no, more, no, dad? You don't know that. You forgot that, too. You don't know that. That's the most dad move ever to just be like, did we pay that? I, get, I buy one of these already. Are you sure I didn't give you money to the movies? All right. Here's what we're <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Movies. Exactly. Dads. Is Glenn still peeing? No, no. Glenn is finished and is like covered the hole and everything. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm just making the bed. <laughs> 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 Tidying up. Let me go into my walk-in closet. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> gonna put the coffee on, and now I'm outside. Here I am. Oh, hey, Ron. We're about ready to make some moves here. What's our plan of attack? How do you How do you guys want to do this, huh? Um, That's um, uh, I don't. I because I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> the first move, you gotta know thy enemy, like Sun Tzu style. You know what I mean? Mm. So. Is Aaron here? Aaron. Yeah. Uh, Aaron. She, uh, she wakes up in the bed that she shared polyamorously with Ron and uh, <laughs> Vince. And <Okay>. goes, <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't do that. Yeah, she wakes up on her little cot that she rolled into the sand with her and Vince. She goes, yeah, uh, yeah what's up? You still have those birds? I do. Because these were some smart birds. If there's any chance that they could maybe do a flyover, some aerial photography, kind of like some, you know, satellite photos so that we can get a sketch maybe of the lay of the land and hopefully that doesn't like count for an action because it's birds doing it and also like I just want to get a better understanding of what that looks like so you know is there any chance that they could do that no it definitely count as an action but yeah you could you could <laughs> I, I've actually got uh, this little stone of farsight and basically can have one of the birds hold it in their talons and so you can sort of see what they see as they do it so it'll be a uh, you know rather than a picture you know you'll be able to see it in real time oh, oh like a camera. real drone oh yeah 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 it is like a drone this is like your whole thing, Glenn. You're like a big drone guy. So to remind you, anytime you take what I'm calling a climaction, something to prepare Uh-oh. you for the big <laughs> climax. You know, like thinking of baseball. Or, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to roll a D10 and I'll say how many hours it takes. And every time that you get past a threshold of five hours, the Omega Daddies will roll on their own separate upgrade table. And currently the Omega Daddies, 
their table's at 13. So two more hours, they will get to roll again. And then you so said they'll roll again at 15, at 20, and so on and so forth. So any action you do, including this scouting drone mission, will roll a D10 to see how many hours it takes. Now, question. Yeah. Yes. Can't we do stuff while this is going on? Like... In theory, if all four dads do four different things at the same at time. Oh, yeah, yeah, if we split up. Doesn't that mean that we can, like, do four things for one? Sure. Okay. You can all do four things separately, but you'll roll four times, and we'll take the worst roll. So, Glenn wants to get a lay of the land. You know, I think that's a great idea, Glenn. That feels like the first thing we should do, because we should probably try to prepare the rest of our strategy around that, you know? I, like like, that. I know when I'm in the kitchen, I got to know what I'm working with. Before I decide, you know, what kind of quinoa I'm going to cook. All right. Well, kids, I think the dads, we got to get planning. We got to get rocking. It's an early morning. Let's just quickly say bye to Killa and uh, How do you eat. fit in the kitchen with all the women in there? <laughs> Ron. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ron, what was that about? I'm just kind of nervous. I thought that if I said something uh, Ron, I think. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, come over here, Ron, if you don't mind. I feel like it's a really teachable moment because Grant oh, heard I this. I love teachable moments. You're everyone. Gonna... Everyone. No, Grant, he's calling he, me out. Aaron probably. comes over. A lot of the hot trees come over. Yeah. No. Oh, you, you call here too, but it's really important that the kids, these young boys hear this because, Ron, that was really, it's not really a great thing to say about women. So if you don't mind, can you <laughs> tell the kids what you said and why it was inappropriate? Yeah, Ron, can you apologize to all the kids? <laughs> Henry has never been more attracted to Daryl than right now. <laughs> Um. <laughs> That's right, Beth. Apologize. <laughs> I was trying to. Whew, okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's me, Ron, on YouTube. I guess I'm here to. Um, some people were offended. <laughs> They're like, no, no. 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 You're That's right. Bullshit. You're right. It's bullshit. I I said something that was. It could have been funny, but it wasn't. Actually, there was no way it could have been funny. Even if the best, strongest, manliest comedian said it, it still wouldn't have been funny. <laughs> About women in the kitchen. But where women really belong is in our hearts, in our minds. And um, <laughs> So wait, wait. So like not on Earth? Not physically? <laughs> <Or> like <laughs> <in> Carol's <laughs> crying. He's like thinking of Carol. <laughs> Miss Carol. <laughs> well, uh, what I meant is that I'm in a a place where I'm not feeling very strong and I no. was sad. And so I made a joke about somebody that I knew was strong because it's like, well, women are so much better and smarter <laughs> and better. everything than men. And so um, I'm sorry that I said that because it, it doesn't reflect how I feel and I'll do better in the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All wow, right, that took a lot yeah. of guts, right? Yeah, that was great, Ron. Yeah, I will be stepping away from social media. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ron, you're canceled for the next three skill checks. <laughs> no. You'll roll with disadvantage until oh, enough time no. goes by that people kind of forget. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, right. I love this. Why don't we introduce cancellation? <laughs> I think the first thing we should do is get these birds to tell us what's going on at that site. We should know the situation. All right. And then we can plan our next stratagem around that. Okay. Yes. Daryl's like listening to Henry. He's like, great, great. Let's just plan this out. So he's like drawing in the sand. He's like, okay, step one though. Let's all just see what's going to go down with Eden Grant. You guys oh, mind? Oh, sure. Yeah. So we're all just standing and we're just watching. Sure, sure. <laughs> so uh, you can see, but not here, as Yeet goes over and then like Grant's getting redder and redder as he gets closer. And... He starts to say some stuff, and then Grant like nods a little bit, and then Grant stands and holds out his hand, and then he goes and pulls him in for a hug Aww. and pats him on the back a few times, and then shakes his hand nice and hearty, and then he like goes like oh how and like shakes his <gasps> hand like strong handshake there, and then punches him on the shoulder playfully. As Daryl sees his son give a real strong handshake, I think every dad is like punching Daryl. Oh, oh look at that! Look at that! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daryl's like squeezing Glenn's and Henry's hands. <laughs> Shit. He grabs Killa, who was in the forest, killing a bounty hunter who tried to sneak into your camp at night. And she comes out holding his head and she waves bye to everybody. Those and, kids uh, are going to be all right. Yeah, they're gonna be fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the two of them head off into the forest and Grant watches them go. All right. I put on the little to-do list, check in with Grant's feelings. <laughs>
let's organize this. I got the spreadsheet on the on the sand here. Nick Jr. He's helping write. Let's let's I figure this out. Well, there, I think we can know. Like again, like when I'm making quinoa, like yeah. I know I'm gonna want to get some other stuff out of the fridge, yeah. even if I don't know what's going on with the quinoa yet. So I do think, like maybe I don't know a lot, which is why I should stand aside and let people like women um, <laughs> who know more educate me. Aaron was about to say something, and then you said that. <laughs> If they have it in them, if they're kind enough to teach me, then yes. That's great, Ron. Although I don't think you should like expect women to do that later. I just said you. I didn't I, I didn't expect it. <laughs> but Ron. if they did, if it they would did. be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how, how can this room be worse somehow than Twitter? Like just... <laughs> okay, so we should figure out like who would help us out in a fight like this, right, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. First Let's just... person that I always think of, speaking of strong women, is my mom. Oh, you know? she's a badass. Ooh. Like, she yeah, basically yeah, 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 yeah. kicked my dad's ass the yeah. last time they met. I know he was like, Yeah, she hump. saved us. Yeah, yeah, she's, you know? And so I that was thinking, sense. I can reach out to my mom, Autumn. So maybe while these birds are doing their Farscape thing, I can uh, check out what's going on with my mom. Okay, so your mom, we got the birds. Ron. I got some thoughts with the. We'll see. I'll, I'll let you guys know. I have some. Okay. I got. Did you just a call plan. my mom a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that one means. Glenn, that, that hero is, over there, <laughs> Glenn. That is completely unacceptable. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, you need to dunk on him five times as hard to take the heat off of you. I quote retweet him. <laughs> Henry's like, hey, Ron, this you? <laughs> Ron, Ron, Ron is crying. Ron's crying a little bit. Ron, what's the first thing you want to do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, so, there's so many things I want to do, but I think I just have to take it a step at a time. Yeah. Um, Daryl, I, you know, do you, do you, I, do you sometimes broke Ron's brain a little bit. I'm sorry. I, well, I mean, you didn't again, like, it's just, you know, like, Anyway, yeah, you Ron, should I'll all feel bad for how you made Ron feel. <laughs> hey, Ron, I'll give you a second to think. I was thinking maybe the first thing I know is maybe a little just nostalgic or I, I just missed it. But it feels like the minivan is really powerful. Is there any way we can get the minivan back? Like we're going to end up on a highway. If we get through, I'm just saying we get That's through true. and we don't got our seatbelts on. We're just going to end up in the middle of a highway. You can get hit by a car right away. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about that. It's like those scenes in movies where they're in the sewers and then they pop the manhole up. And you just know that a big truck is going to come zooming down yes. the street. And it's going to scare the willies out of me. And I'm going to spill the popcorn everywhere. I hate that. Scare <laughs> the willies? Oh, 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 geez. What if we find some way, something that that Willie is scared of. Ooh. Oh, well, what do you think he might be scared of, Ron? Ron's standing up for himself. That's for sure. Because, yeah. Ron, you're yeah. pretty impressive. Maybe. Well, I don't really know, but if everything kind of comes back to our feelings, or what about that doctor that Aaron knows? Oh, Which doctor, doctor, not me. I think was their name. Or yeah. Not you? Yes, yes. Her name was Doctor, not me. What are you thinking, Ron? Well, in all those crime documentaries, there are all these people who are like, "What if this was what was wrong with the bad guy?" And maybe if we had any clue of what was going on in our dad's minds then like oh. you know we're doing the external reconnaissance and this is like the internal reconnaissance i see what you're saying I, i'm taking what you're picking up i'm you know when you're picking up what you're <laughs> how do they say that so uh, aaron goes like, yeah, i can go get not me very easily do you want to do that now or while everybody else is doing their thing well, what, what are their rates uh probably free so it seems oh, like wow. the, oh my wow. god that's oh healthcare, my god. healthcare is can great in this. <laughs> so it seems like not me is pretty easy to get to do you have any sense of like the minivan situation the minivan situation so when you last told me about the issue with your wives coming through mm -hmm. that was before you had lost the van yeah yes so that was before you lost your van so in that timeline the thing that made them come in uh oh daryl this is some primer stuff yeah, some primer. this is a primer Just so get ready daryl's sitting so, down already <laughs> <laughs> so if the van had stayed in the forgotten realms mm -hmm. and everything had gone exactly as it was going to mm -hmm. eventually your wives are going to come in get trapped in that pyramid, become mummies, all that bad stuff. In order to change the timeline such that the van could come through, you're going to have to do something unexpected or something weird that will allow this timeline to schism off from the one that you saw faded if everything went Darryl as Daryl dives as his head into the clam bank and goes... Blah, 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 blah. That was so unexpected and weird. Wow, that was weird. Maybe we broke it. Did that do it? Uh, roll a d20? <laughs> 
It was 10. It was like mediocre weird. Yeah, and it wasn't that weird. It feels like one of the things that you would do when I told you to do something True. weird. So um, so random. I don't know if it's something you can actively do. It might be something. And also, like, if it's something you can do, like, to the portal, like, if you can get something to the other side of the portal that you weren't planning on doing uh, beforehand, that could be helpful. But I, I don't know if it's something you can, like, train to do right now. But maybe, you know, depending on how the fight goes, I don't know. Maybe okay. it's something Ooh, you try okay. to do with Wait a fight. second. We'll keep an the eye remote. On that. We have two charges on the remote, right? Mm -hmm. Last episode, I basically said I was going to roll a d20 once you uh, tried the battery on the remote. Every time you used it, you pressed return. It went back to the mall. I rolled a d20 and got a natural 20. So you have two uses of the remote before the battery is fizzled out completely. I know when we used the return button last time, it returned the remote to where it was. But Daryl, you've still got the keys. Yeah, for the I got Honda the car Odyssey, keys. I never right? leave. Yeah, I never jump out of my car without my keys in them. So, in them is what I call my if pockets. We, <laughs> <laughs> if we aim the remote at your keys yeah. and we hit return, it seems to reason they would return to the car. What if we wrote a message on the keys, like on the keychain? That's and not a sent bad idea. a message back through. <gasps> oh, that's not a bad idea at all. You know who the most reliable person that we've ever met was? My dad? Intern Doug. Oh. <gasps> oh yeah, intern oh, the Doug, murderer. The, the one who died. Yeah, that oh. was his only flaw. Really, was that he's dead yeah. now. <laughs> other than that, he was such a rock solid intern. Well, either way, he's not on the other end of the portal. But my point is, if you asked intern Doug to get this car for you, you oh, he'd find a way. Yeah, <laughs> he'd find a way. It's intern Doug. But again, he's dead. What if we returned him to life? Oh. Where is intern Doug buried? <laughs> That's, That's my question. Well, he was disintegrated, so he was a pile mm. of dust outside of Castle Ravenloft. So if one of you wanted to go get him, that would definitely okay, be a role. I, you all know I was not the biggest fan of Doug. That's true. He was a hard worker, but he was a murderer. He and that is where I anyone. He openly admitted multiple mm, times, and the fact I that you was, don't want to deal with it, Henry, I understand mm. is something you gotta talk about because our Glenn intern looks, murdered Glenn somebody. He looks at his hands and he's like, Daryl. Have we not all committed the greatest sin? That's here what I'm murder? saying is I'm trying to forgive him. And also, like, it does feel messed <laughs> up that his family maybe doesn't know what happened to him. So maybe I can, like, go meet his family or something and, like, find something of him and then, like, click return on that and maybe I'd bring him back. So here's, um, actually, this is a question. Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> if we really made the effort to get Doug back, can we say that Doug reduces all the rules from a D10 to a D8 because he's such an efficient... Intern. 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 He's such a that good he <laughs> us. And I love that. I he's love such that. an absolute killer, as we say in the tech industry. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love that. <laughs> okay. Hey, Ron, I, maybe I know you were a big fan of Doug. Maybe do you yeah. want to, maybe me and you can go get Doug. Do you want to go get Doug? Yeah. yeah here's like the thing. You know, go visit the family. Make sure they have his ashes and then use the remote on the ashes. Yeah, we'll check that in with the family. And hopefully they'll have the ashes. All right. Okay. All of these seem like stuff where we have to go out and do a lot of things. Is there a way that we could get all these people to us? Like, I don't know if you guys remember, but I am in a very successful rock band called Hi, I'm Ron. That's true. Very and true. If, if I, We're all in it. If I offered like a concert or something. Well, so Ron, this is actually tying into something I was thinking about. What do you mean? So back in our world, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was a Netflix documentary about the fire festival. And a Hulu oh, it's called, documentary. It's called Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I'm saying. They managed to get like a bunch of chuckle fucks onto an island in the middle of nowhere with a good social media strategy. So here's what I was thinking. We scout out the portal area. And we throw our own fire festival with social media, with Ron playing the role of Ja Rule, headlining the concert. And we get, because like, there's going to be a big fight here, onto this battle plane. We get everyone here. And that way, there's going to be so many people. There's going to be so much chaos. And everyone's going to be so pissed because, by the way, we're not, we're not going to feed them. We're going to use really shitty tents. And, and we're gonna... not going to perform. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to promise that all these things are going to happen. And they'll be so angry. I will say most of the normal people we've met here have been pretty, like the first people we met were like kicking that dragon. Like the people here are pretty violent. So you're saying we just get as many fans of Hi, I'm Ron as possible. And we rile them up with cheese sandwiches. <laughs> My fan tents. base is incredibly toxic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good point, Ron. I'm not usually for this kind of grift, but I really do want to get home. 
It does seem like, if I remember that documentary right, they raised a bunch of money. That's true. That's true. They sold so many tickets. <laughs> yeah. So we could probably <laughs> use that money to hire an army or something. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Anthony is and burying you know his head. And you know what? All the bad guys are going to be at the fire festival, and then they're not going to be guarding the thing, the, th- the, the portal. That's true. It'll be the ultimate distraction slash cover slash money making slash money making endeavor that we've ever come up with they're gonna be pretty surprised when they get that first flyer saying that there's gonna be a giant concert right where their portal is that's gonna no, be no it's gotta be away from the portal right away from the portal I thought we want all these people to like close enough nearby nearby <laughs> that like we don't have to you know really book our, okay, I'm feeling our sick flights. for even suggesting this but like what you're suggesting because I, I didn't watch that doc I only get three DVDs a month so I haven't watched that <laughs> I haven't watched Watch that um, documentary yet. And two of them are always Indiana Jones <laughs> one and three. So it's really just one DVD in rotation. <laughs> Holy um, shit. That's amazing. But if they were all really hungry, I guess when it's time, you could just tell them that the food is at the portal. And yeah, then exactly. you essentially have we'll a do, we'll do hungry it nearby. Mob. Neverwinter's a big place, right? We'll say it's nearby Neverwinter, and then just like in the documentary when they hold all of them in this like random house and they give them a bunch of booze for like a day. Yeah. Then we'll direct them towards where the portal is, the battleground as it were. So is it like that we seduce the people working with our dads to come to the fire festival? I mean, listen, probably it's going to be the hottest of men in town. It's going to be a real hot ticket. I'm thinking, look, as long as we're talking about hit HBO documentaries or whatever, (laughs) there was also one about this. This is Hulu and Netflix, Henry. (laughs) Ron's like really specific about like what things are on what streaming platform. Like he knows, my dad he knows cold absolutely every single thing available on every streaming. Platform. Ron runs and I stream at dot yeah, com. That's, Ron his, is that's his business. Ron makes four hundred thousand dollars a month running cam. I, I'm, I I'm on decider. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Ron. Sorry. But there was one about this guy, Bernie Madoff, and he did what's called a Ponzi scheme. And you could do like a scheme where we raise all this money from the people that are going to the fire festival. And then we use that money to buy off the people that are working for our debts. Cause we say we need security or whatever. Half of them will probably quit. Cause it's going to be the hottest social event of the summer. But what do we do with all those angry people? By the time they figure out what's happened, that's We're the beauty of it. Gone. We're long. That's right. We're out of here. I, I like that. This whole thing is starting to sound like a really big scam. Oh. oh. And I know scam likely owes us a favor do you think maybe like we could call up Scam and that the favor could be like to help us put on this concert and maybe like he would help our role in terms of it being effective and doing the stuff we wanted to if do? Maybe that could scam hundreds of thousands of people to go to a concert where you're only getting served cheese sandwiches but being charged hundreds of dollars. It would be scam likely. Oh, Matt, it was thousands of dollars. Thousands, thousands of dollars. And thousands. Well, there's going to be hundreds of gold or uh, we'll, we'll figure out the prices. I'm not quite sure. If you can't tell, I don't really know what the prices are in this world. Um, oh. <gasps> Well, actually, yeah, you see a, oh, a, a no. figure jump down from one of the trees. It's Fedora hitting the ground before it does something. Oh, no! Those hot trees would never let him hang out with them. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> he negged them really hard. <laughs> oh, no. Um, well, actually, the guy goes, well, actually, there were two documentaries that were sort of competing. They had different information. <laughs> You've been referring to just the one fire festival, but there was also the other one that was a arrival on Hulu. But, but uh, no, I, I would love, I would love well, actually, to scam. I, Ron Stampler, already mentioned the Hulu yes, and the Netflix I was going to say, you're the only one who did it correctly, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, actually, uh, Ron's the best one. Ron knows what Ron's talking about, but oh. I... Heard a little birdie say that you wanted to scam, actually, and I thought I could get involved. <laughs> uh, it's hard to uh. scam. Well, swell, actually. Uh, swell, actually, swell, it's fun. actually. Swell, actually. Swell, swell, likely. Uh, swell, likely. Uh, swell. That's likely. what I call my dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Never mind. Not that anymore. Now it's scam, actually. Scam I've, actually, I've switched now to scam, swell actually. actually. Do you think you're up for a scam? Uh, I'm just, you know, dealing with the fact that. The, the trauma defines who you are sort of permanently in a way that I'm trying to deal with. Oh, wow. I, I was well, actually, and then I was scam likely, and it's like, which one am I? Am I both? Am I neither? Am I dead? Am I alive? I don't know, but 
I know if I get busy and don't think about it too hard, I won't want to die. Hey, you know could yeah, we're about to get a therapist. Yeah, yeah. Say, we're hiring a therapist. No, no, they'll need a therapist. Th- well, actually, I know exactly, I know exactly how you're talking about, man. We'll put you to work, baby. That works for me because there is one thing that a man with a fedora is definitely not going to do with go to therapy. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what if therapy could come to you? Uh, unless it takes the form of a hot anime waifu body pillow, I have no interest in it I'm whatsoever. I'm done with you. <laughs> we don't have to like our employees except to do the job that we're hiring them for. <laughs> Look, if you want someone to send out some very enticing social media posts, by which I mean I go to all the posts in all the towns and sort of scratch an advertisement for your festival. Yes. I an, would be, an orange square, right? Yeah, I would be more than happy to do that, but I am going to need a name for whatever the name of this cool concert is. Is. Oh. oh. Ooh. The Ron Con? Is that a thing? Ron Con's not bad. You could Ron also be the farewell Con. tour. Ooh. Ron Con, the farewell tour. Brought to you by Boost Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> you know Boost Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> I can never catch him. He's always on the moon. He's so fast. Where are you at? I ask. <laughs> Ron Con, the farewell well, tour. tour. Bye, I'm Ron. Bye, I'm Bye. Ron. Bye, I'm Ron. Ron. He's very, very good. good. Wow. Can you guys do like um? Motion messages with sound and audio, like a multimedia experience on magic on paper or something like that. Aaron, yes. anybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We need to shoot a video to promote this. Ron, it's important though that the people hear from you. You're the face of this operation. That's what they're going to be coming here for. So you got to really like pump up the festival, you know, get people excited for it. Glenn, you're going to be responsible for our PR and you'll get the final uh, approval. But I think we should let Scam actually hear put together the scam? Yeah, no, I like what you're putting down, though. Yeah, definitely some sort of... That's how you say it. I like what you're putting down. You pick up what you're putting down. Okay. (laughs) It's both. Both. You can do both. It works both ways. Like me. Canonically bisexual. (laughs) So, yeah, no, what I was thinking... Finally. A video video asset could be pretty good, and I have brought a goblin who can draw very quickly, and a goblin who's amazing at doing impressions, but only once. (laughs) So, yeah, if you want to just really quickly record something, Ron, that's something I can sort of take to all the different posts. Okay. And go. Okay. Hi, I'm Ron, but I won't be for long. Or I actually, I'm going to still It's one be, take. We got one take. You got to keep going. Uh, you came here because you're excited for Ron Con, the farewell tour. Bye, I'm Ron, but I'm still here in this video, still talking right now. If you come to Ron Con, you will have so many fun things to do. Blend, tell them what they get. Influencers can get the experience of a lifetime. Imagine partying with all the coolest band members of Hi, I'm Ron. Hi, I'm Ron. Exclusively. Hi, I'm Daryl. Hey, I, I'm Henry. Was I in the band? I, I, yeah. Yeah. And our new member, Payton. Hey, what's up? I'm the roadie. For 1,000 gold, you'll get exclusive a access. 1,000 gold. <laughs> hey, a mere 1,000 gold. You'll get exclusive access. A yurt. Luxury yurt. There's packages at all price levels, but like, just to be clear. Good, all price levels. Also, one one gold. You can come if it's free, too. No, 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 no,
that. I was really hoping you would forget about that. That's my bad. Yeah, don't tell people I work with him. Listen, people don't forget. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I will uh, I will head off and do that. And that makes us even Stevens. No more favors from Scam, actually. But it was a pleasure potentially uh, taking a lot of money from people and me wetting my beak a little bit with a percentage. It was That was a pleasure That's to fair. do. Well, should we iron out that percentage before we get... No, we'll the- figure it out along mm. the way. I'll, uh, Scam oh, actually... Sure, that seems reasonable. <laughs> Scam actually away. Wait, and- Scam, before you go. Yes. You get 5%. I think a fair cut is 5%, he says persuadingly. Okay, go for it. 15 plus 14, 29. Scam likely is also pretty charismatic, yeah. though. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, a 14 plus a 20, which I'm going to say is scam likely is resistance to scams or persuasion, uh, is a 34. So it doesn't quite work on him. So by five, you mean with a zero at the end, correct? 50, a good old five, zero. You've already got a great deal of money. We're mostly concerned about the people getting yeah, here. Yeah, aren't That's you guys fine. on your way That's out? Yeah. Why That's does it fine. matter? That's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's okay, fine. 50%. Sounds delightful. Remember, Scam, build up FOMO, fear of missing out. That's the key. That's how they got all those idiots on an island. I think this concert's going to be full of FOMO. It's going to be full of fire, opportunity, murder, other things. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. All right, Scam, actually away. And he grabs the two uh, goblins and puts them on his shoulders, and he bounces off back into the forest of hot trees and disappear. So that was an action, I feel like. Yeah. So I'm going to roll for that. The things we have right now are you're going to go to your mom. Going to talk to mom, scouting the portal, and then Ron and Daryl going to find Doug. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to roll 3d10 and we're going to take the worst of all three. That's a 10. Ooh. You rolled a 2, a 3, and a 10. Oh, no. 10 hours. That's fair. We're doing three things for 10 hours. In addition to the one for bringing in Scam Actually, they got a 2 on that one. So they got up to 15. And then a 10 brings up to 25. So they get three dad actions from the last time we talked. <sighs> okay. Shit. Okay. Well, right. th- we're going to get a lot done right here. Then, and we're going to get Doug, who's going to make it all more efficient. Let's paint the picture. Let's see what the scout is. Yeah, says. let's get the scout first. Oh, no. Here's what it is. It's like the scrying stones are two little VR goggles. So it's like I'm wearing <laughs> VR goggles. That's Whoa! great. Whoa, yeah. it's like I'm there. You've got like rock goggles. Roculus. A Roculus rock- Quest. Oh my God. Nice. Yeah, you have a Roculus <laughs> Quest on, and you can see through them as the owl swoops and dives through the <laughs> air. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, Air, God. Like, oh, shit. Sorry. Let me put a dot in the middle of the screen. That'll like reduce okay. it kind of, but not really. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Uh, someone fanned me. They <laughs> just fanned me with air. So it's hey, like it just a- blows. Like, <laughs> okay. That just, helps. It's a cool summer breeze, baby. It helps. It helps. So you can see beneath you the city of Neverwinter, and then you uh, head over a half mile of trees, and then you see a clearing that you first appeared in this magical world of fantasy in. You can almost see it. Home. (laughs) Wow. So you see a large purple orb that encompasses what seems to be a whole lot of construction going on. So if you imagine, like, I know orbs don't have corners, but if you imagine, like, on the, you know, like, if you draw a square and then draw a circle in the middle of the square or whatever. The directions. The directions, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. There are four towers with a purple crystal on the top of each tower. Mm. And those seem to be connected to that orb. Mm. And because Aaron's with you, she goes like, ah, I think that's a dispel magic ball. So any spell trying to go through it or somebody who is under influence of a spell trying to go through it, the second they hit it, that spell is going to disable. And as you can see, it's, it's only half of the orb is sort of showing, which means it goes underground as well. And I heard you like to dig and stuff, so that might be, you know, you might not be able to turn it into a You heard right. You can see within the orb, You see some people building 50-foot stone walls. You see a bunch of contractors building these very large stone walls. That was one of the things that they got on their upgrade path. Shit. You see the lady who you screwed out of the Daryl Barrel special. She's just bench pressing just really hard. (laughs) Uh Damn. You can tell that she's a challenge rating 10 creature, which means that she is well-balanced for four people at level 10 to take on alone. I don't like that. You see a large umbrella under which is a vampire counting its money, and you realize this is the vampire Dadkula from the live show that we did. Oh. Dadkula. That's right, he's canon. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he looks angry and ready to rip somebody's head off with his teeth. You see what looks to initially be just a very large like sword swinging in the air back and forth, and then it turns into a mace, and then it turns into a shield, and you realize this is everything, the shapeshifter. <gasps> oh. No! Uh, no! Who is Thing. Who was holding a? Oh, was this your plan? No, not, I mean, that's no, it's yes. not like everything was going to win it for us, but we were going to call on everything. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. Well, I mean, she's also counting a bunch of money in her hands, so she oh, could potentially be swayed mm. the other way. Is she holding a bunch of love in her hands? Because that's all I have to give. Yeah. <laughs> and within that, you can see, as you've seen before, or at least as I've described it before, 
a veritable three ring circus. You see three rings individually. <laughs> And you see one of them has... Anthony's had to get it in. One of them has... had to get it in. Each of them has a purple robed figure inside of it, casting what seemed to be some sort of spell. You can see like purple energy coming from it, Mm -hmm. going into the portal itself. And you can see that three of them are concentrating, doing some sort of magic on it, presumably magic to close it. And they are surrounded by a group of bodyguards. How many bodyguards? There are 10 bounty hunters. Currently, those bounty hunters are building the walls. You can see 10 blue coats and David Boreanaz, and they're protecting Barry. And you can also see... The Lance and 10 of his crew, the Lance. numbered 3 through 13, are next to Bill Close. And Willie is alone as he continues to cast this spell. Ooh. Does it look like there's any space for like a field for like maybe tents? Like how many tents do you think? Oh, yeah. No, there's a big open. This is only on the northernmost end of the field. And uh, there's a bunch of field elsewhere. What are the odds that it's a great battleground and a great venue for our huge <laughs> concert? The reason we can talk during this is that it's like a movie and you're cutting to Nick Jr. is like drawing the map in the sand. Ah, yes, and yeah, Glenn good. is explaining to us everything he saw. Glenn just like straight up laid down because it totally knocked him out how woozy he is after VR. (laughs) (laughs) You can also see that there are a fair number of the soldiers there. They're not armed with them yet, but you can see a couple of racks of bows and arrows. Yeah, we can. (laughs) 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 Yeah. A (laughs) wooga. The map is really detailed and it gets the racks and it's just the racks. And Glenn's like, sorry, I just stopped paying attention. Squeak, squeak. Got distracted. And you can also see that the Lance's crew is building a catapult. Mm. Fuck, a catapult? Shoot. I mean, darn. Oh, this is a lot, guys. I thought it was going to be like 10 people or something. This is a lot. It does definitely feel like, though, that their weakness is from the sky. So as you say that, Mm. (laughs) as you say that, unfortunately, you hear through the Roculus quest. And then you see what appears to be like a black line. And then it turns 90 degrees in one direction. You realize this is the two-dimensional dragon, Radiolab, who you last fought and Mm -hmm. turned two-dimensional in Meth Bay. And 8-bit. And 8-bit, yeah. It looks like a dragon from like an NES game. Oh no, those birds triggered a random battle. (laughs) I'm going to roll perception Uh for it, actually. It turns and it sees the owl. And it starts (laughs) like flying towards it as quickly as it can. And Aaron goes, oh, gotta go. I, I think you saw everything you need to see. Owl, get out. Get, get out, of there. out of there. Get out of there. And the owl flies away as quickly <laughs> as it can. <laughs> I'm going to roll again to see if it can avoid getting burned. It rolled an 18 on its just like dexterity for getting away. Woo! So it barely, you see pixelated fire singeing the sides of your screen as the owl just barely <laughs> manages to get away. But at the very least, now they know that you've scouted them out. Well, oh boy. These dragons are a real problem. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to sit down. Henry, like, has gone completely pale at the sight of the massive army that is it's waiting okay. for them. It's okay, Henry. Never doubt the power of oh, social geez. media and FOMO. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Glenn. It seems like maybe we're going to need more than a zany rock concert to win this one. Did you see they have a big wall, man? They got a wall, and they got wizards, and they've got a dragon. We got time. We got, do you want to tell us how it went down with your mom, or do you want to hear about how it went down with Doug? Yeah, right. My mom. My mom. Well, boys, let me tell you <laughs> all about it. <laughs> doodaloo, 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 doodaloo. So you head back to Oakvale. And for the purposes of this montage, Henry is always eating in every scene, like Brad Pitt wow. no, since 11. He's got Love a that. cool shrimp cocktail. <laughs> Did you bring the kids? Yeah, I brought the kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So you head to Oakvale. As you're heading to Oakvale, boop, 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 you go back to your normal size. And Sparrow's like, oh, I ate a mushroom. Yeah. And you come back to Oakvale and you can see that the residents of Oakvale are kind of in dire straits. <gasps> the trees are beginning to wilt. They're hungry. They don't quite know what to do. There's all this oil in the middle of their camp. They don't know what the hell that's for. <laughs> Nobody ever came back to claim it. They invented French fries. I forgot they invented French fries. They're all just eating French fries and just being like, this doesn't feel like enough. Like we need to do <gasps> something else. No, but, but the Martian says you can just eat potatoes, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Barry was the one who provided for us and he's gone now. And blah. and Autumn's like, everybody just calm the fuck down. Just we can make food. What do you do? We fu- oh. And she sees you come through the forest and she goes, oh, OK, cool, cool. Hey, what's up? What's up, Henry? Grandkids? Oh, that feels still weird coming out of my mouth. What's going on? Hi, Mom. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, you found the kid. Good. I was going to warn you they ran. And yeah, that's, thanks. Oof. This is real responsible. I, of, you know, I know. I, I'm OK. I'm bad at being a mom. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no, sorry. You know, I don't want to put you on blast. Look, yeah, um, no. Mom, what, what happened here? What's going on? Uh, it turns out, I guess your cousins, I guess I would call them, they sort of were bred to worship Barry and always listen to whatever he wanted them to do. And when you, well, when I sort of killed his homunculus, they at least expected the real one would come back and help them out and give them purpose. But uh, he just kind of 
for you, you know how he is. He, oh, they didn't, man, they didn't do gosh. good enough. He didn't think they were worth it. So he, they're all sort of abandoned looking for direction and I'm trying to do it, but I'm not exactly, well, I couldn't raise one kid. I can't raise. Oh 50. mom, you know, you don't, I mean, come on. That's that. You don't have to, you don't have to do that. I mean, let's not, we don't have to mince words. I was shitty. I was bad. I'm sorry. I never properly apologized to you when you were here. I want to apologize. I'm Henry sorry. hugs his mom says mom that, you know, that means a lot. And I, and I love you. I, I love you too. And she pats you on the back. Do you want to kick dad's ass? Oh, very badly. Look, I got to get home. I got to get my boys home. And dad and a couple of the other dads are trying to block this portal, the portal we came through. And they've got an army. And we're putting together an army too. We've got a pretty crazy plan. By the way, if you see any flyers about a really fun music festival, don't give them any of your money because it's a kind of side hustle we've got you going see, on. Yeah, as you say that, you see a bunch of the Oakvalians. We're going like, oh, and then you can <laughs> see that they're holding these flyers. And she's like, oh, that was all they were looking There's forward to. There's a soccer to. team that's like selling chocolates and be like, please get us enough money so yeah, we can get the wrong They con. saved up everything for the thousand golds here. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. So look, I need your help. You're the most powerful woman I know. You're I'm next to my wife, of course. Uh, yeah, not that I want to rank you two. That seems weird. I'm not. <laughs> you, know, you know, we should definitely be pitted I'm against each other. Daryl is in here. I mean, he's on this whole tear right now, putting people on blast. Anyway, <laughs> cancellation, Daryl. Yeah, I think it's like a power trip for him a little bit. I mean, maybe you've been rubbing off on him. So, mom, I any help you could give us would be amazing. And maybe this is like you know. Yeah. Dad needs to face what he's done. He needs to be held accountable for the community he's abandoned. So I, I turn to my directionless hippie family and I say, if any of you want to face Barry, you know, like that's some, you can join us. You can join us in our fight, you know? Sparrow jumps onto a rock and says, yes, yes, disenfranchised acolytes of Oakvale. Why not rise up and take up arms against your absent God, against the man who promised you so much and delivered so little? Why not follow a better, cooler God? Daddy! And he points at you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. My daddy is God. No, my no. dad's your new God. What if you followed my dad? What uh, if God was <laughs> my dad? <laughs> uh, Sparrow, that was, you know, as the kids say, pretty based. But, you know, oh I God. just want, that's what that means, right? Based on what? <laughs> that's based on something called AF. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but I says the whole point is that we don't need gods. We don't need, you know, to worship someone. You don't need to have that kind of relationship. This should be a community that is founded on beliefs, not on men. And, you know, on people, this is about, you know, like democracy and all. Ah, Daryl should be here. He'd be able to die. He reads all those history Give books. me a persuasion roll. Oh, God. Henry. Henry's so bad at persuasion. Before Henry left, <laughs> Glenn gave Henry bardic inspiration <laughs> by being like, Henry, I know you're probably going to run into a situation. So here's just. And everybody knows how bad you are at persuasion. Everyone knows how oh, not God, persuasive you're right. I'm going to screw are. it up. Oh, man. Henry, you always just got to remember the great words of Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them. Hold what? You got to know when to fold them. Fold what? Uh, yeah, you just keep that in mind. Okay. Got to know, you know, you, and, the, the gambler. Then, the so gambler. Kenny Rogers. They're Cut also the put, you got a bag lunch of the clam bake, and Daryl put a note in there saying, you're going to do great. Oh. <laughs> that gives him bardic inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> the gambler shit did nothing. <laughs> and cutting back to the moment, Henry's bombing it and flop sweating. This clam bake lunch turns in his chest and he thinks about what Daryl said to him and he says you know what this community we've got to know when to hold them and we've got to know when to fold them and it's time to put our cards on the table and say Barry Oak you can't just walk away from what you've done you've got to stand and face your crimes you need to be held accountable sir now who's with me give me a roll and we'll find out who's with you I got a 16 so the group of Ogilians before you were like I don't, maybe that's just, it's, it's a lot to ask. And he was our, and Lark steps in front of you and goes, no gods, no Kings, only this. And he holds up his fist and he's going to also roll. <laughs> oh no. Yes. What if Lark is secretly going down this like cult leader path, man? I mean, oh yeah. It I, seems I, like I called this from happening. day one. <laughs> and so they like look to Lark and Sparrow and to you. They look at the Oak family. Assembled and Autumn Oak says, You all seem like you got nothing. Killing Barry, I can't promise it'll solve something, but it'll definitely be something to fucking do. And looking at all of you together and seeing the different 
varieties of persuasion that are going on. The weird my dad is a god thing. The do the, <laughs> There's a little something for everyone. Yeah, they, yeah it's, a, it's a real <laughs> smorgasbord of different persuasion attempts. And with their combined roles and your role, the group of Ophelians goes like, oh, okay, okay, all right. So what, we just, we join you and we're gonna, we're gonna be like, like an army? Like the army of oaks? The oaks? Yes, the army of the oaks. Yeah, that sounds cool, right? I like that. Can you guys fight? I can't remember if you can fight. Uh, I mean, we're more, oh, we're yeah. mages. We can do oh, magic and stuff. Great. We're not great at like hurting people too much, but we can heal. We can do druid stuff like with trees and the ground. Oh, yeah, if you'd trees. have any trees. That's yeah. terrific. We could use you in this battle. And by the way, what's that? Uh, and Henry points. And Autumn at, goes, oh, the, the barrel? Yeah, what is that thing? Yeah, I, uh, so I don't know if you want your kids to see this, but once they left, I figured out what it did. What, what does it do? Okay, and she kicks it with, <laughs> she kicks a very specific part of it with her foot, and it unfurls into a large crab-like mech. And Lark and Sparrow both go, amina, 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 <laughs> The process of this thing unfolding takes literally 45 seconds. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And tears are just streaming down Lark and Sparrow's faces. Like all the anger and all the rage that you saw in Lark over the past couple of days, like almost begins to melt away. And he and Sparrow just begin to hold hands. And then the holding hand slowly turns and them just embracing each other very tightly while they're both looking at this thing going, oh. <laughs> father, father, <laughs> may, may, may Lark and I perchance, and they just start crawling towards it on their, hands <laughs> on their hands and knees. Boys, how about we take this thing for a spin together? <laughs> they giggle so happily, and I imagine, yeah, you cut to you and the boys. It's a little bit of a squeeze, but to get inside the cockpit, it's the three of you while Autumn leads the oak valians who are all munching on fries back through the forest and lark and sparrow are happy as clams they're firing well, what does this fucking thing do <laughs> i love when you cut back we're all eating fries now like yeah, we've yeah, been like you you know, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like and anyway that's how we got this giant crab mech crazy <laughs> story as you're walking back they're swiping the claws back and forth and just cutting trees down um, um, <laughs> sparrow's like well we shouldn't tell aaron about this part don't tell aaron about these trees <laughs> they're turning the lights on and off on its eyes and stuff and uh <laughs> The rear, oh, it's got a rear hatch and it opens up and they're like, ooh, so we could drop little surprises for our friends. And then Lark goes like, look, look. And he jumps through the back hatch. He goes, and poop. And then he jumps back in and Sparrow's like, good one, brother. And then, yeah, we cut back to the campfire and all the funny things you said about having fries. It's probably like the crab is now there and the kids are just all running on it and around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Does yeah. the crab have keys? Let's see. Henry now has the keys. I ask my mom to cast arcane lock on it. There you <laughs> go. The key to the arcane Great. Lock. Perfect. So, yeah, you're the only one who has the code to open the arcane lock. I like the lock. idea that in the background, the crab is like frozen in a position where the, the claws are like out like a little slide and the kids are just like, yeah, wee, you know. going up, wee, yeah. going up. Well, guys, I got some druids and a big metal crab and my mom. And between the three of those things, I think probably my mom's the real win. I gotta be honest. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald! I'm sorry. I don't know. Good one. Don't, get another teachable moment I coming know, up for I you, don't Ronald. Know, I don't Good know one. what came over me. In the spreadsheet of all the different things we're doing, there's Ron's teachable moments. You see like six crosses on it <laughs> throughout the day. <laughs> Ron, roll a d20 real quick. <laughs> I got a 19. Cool. Uh oh, that could be good or yeah. bad. I don't think that's uh, bad. You catch Autumn Oak making eyes at you across oh, the Oh, no! <laughs> oh! Henry's on nits, but, like, seductively. <laughs> well, congrats on getting your mom back. Thanks, Ron. Uh, mom, do you want to meet the other dads? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should tell you about how it went. With Doug. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to hear about that. So we cut to Daryl and Ron knocking on the door of a little log cabin that is in the valley beneath Castle Ravenloft. It's very cold. The walk down there was very frigid, but you can see that there's a little lake down here and some berries and stuff. The weather is a little bit more manageable down here than it is up top where the uh, the howling winds of the abyss scream out from nothing. Wow, what a mood. Daryl's combed his hair and they stopped by the mall and he got a suit. <laughs> Ron also got a suit yeah. and a little briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there are flowers look outside. Like reservoir dogs. <laughs> yeah. Looking back on the track. Ron, do you remember Doug's last name? <laughs> I was pretty sure it was the intern. Oh, I don't that you I knock try on the door. Oh. All right. Two very round, smiling older people look at you. 
you smell immediately fresh baked bread and, and the man of the house who is balding goes like, oh, hello. What's, hey. what's, uh, what, what brings you down here? Uh, honey, honey, we've got visitors. Ron takes his hat off that he's suddenly wearing. <laughs> Ron is wearing a hat and he takes it off. And he says, are you Mr. and Mrs. The Intern? <laughs> Roll D20, Ron. Before Ron went, Glenn, <laughs> Glenn looked at Ron and said, Ron, you got to remember the words of Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them. I got a 15. So with a 15, they go, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's day in turn. <laughs> oh, a yeah. lot of people of make that mistake. Of, of course. course. We're so sorry. I it's okay. S- I s- <laughs> Ron says it again, but he uses his hands. We're from hands, Rockport originally. Hands more this time. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> the Intern. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, what brings you here? Well, my associate, Daryl, and Hi, I. Hi, D- Daryl Wilson. Ni- nice to meet you. I put my hand up. So, the mom comes out holding a big old, like, loaf of bread and then puts it down, and steam's coming off it, and she takes off her oven mitts and shakes her hand, and the guy shakes her hand, and they're, they're just two wholesome, wholesome old folks. We have some bad news about your son, Doug. Can I speak to my associate really quick? <laughs> uh, uh, sure, of course. We haven't heard much from Doug in in, in oh, oh my oh, oh, we know. months and months. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! I was. I feel really. Oh shoot! That really threw me off. I thought for sure they knew he was gonna. Never mind. I just really want to eat some bread, and I was like, they're not gonna give us bread if we tell them <laughs> about the <laughs> we son. Tell them but, that her son's but dead. Never mind. Oh, Kenny, okay, I don't. Oh bread. man, I don't know what to uh, do Mrs. now. This is Mister uh, the Intern. Uh, maybe <laughs> this bad news would be better uh, um, digested inside. Oh please, yes, of course. Come oh, in, come in, please. How rude of me! We brought me fucking guests. genius. Let me let me set out the good plates so they. Uh... Oh, you don't need to actually. Wow, these are great. They oh, these are. I mean, we, it's so rare we have guests. Doug made these plates. <laughs> <laughs> His dream is to go to pottery school. Oh, they put out plates, and the plates are all like those like decorative plates, but they're just all of like Doug and his family like hugging each other and stuff, like little like like carved in. We call this one a Doug hug. <laughs> and they feed you some bread, and they spread some butter on it. That's wonderful. It's delicious. Uh, Ron leans over to. Daryl and it's like, actually, if they don't know that Doug's dead, they probably don't know where his body is. Yeah. No, I was thinking, so maybe, so we just need like, hey. <laughs> you guys just get out of there. Ron, Ron um, do you think, okay, I'm going to, Ron, don't, Ron, don't tell this. Don't. You're not going to judge me, right? It's just between us, everything that goes okay. down here, right? Yeah, we we just, need to get it home, okay? Yeah. Um, Fuck. Hi, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Day Turn. Day Turn. Day Turn. Um, <laughs> perfect. Oh, oh, yeah. These, Oof. by the way, these this bread is um, unbelievable. The best oh, bread I've had in a long time. Doug is an employee of ours. Uh, a great oh, kid. You he's have a rock there. star. Oh, we're so happy. So he's hustling. He's he's still on that grind. I'm Always. not gonna lie to you. We haven't seen him in a while because he's been on a job, and he told us to go get some of his things. So if there's any like. Blankets he slept in, or anything that would have like his hair or DNA. (laughs) (laughs) He told us to pick it up. (laughs) Roll persuasion. You got the D12. Just as wait, yeah. Daryl thinks back to the note that he had at his breakfast from Henry that says, "Hey, Daryl, I know you put a burger in here, but just hear me out." Try this squash burger instead. It's really good. I wasn't going to tell you that I swapped it, but I just thought you'd really like it. It's an 18, and that squash burger was so freaking good that Daryl was considering going vegetarian. Wow. Wow. Okay, so upon hearing this, they go like, oh, yeah, I mean, anything that'll keep him on that grind, on that hustle, absolutely. Let me go get some stuff for you. And they bring back, okay, and then you hear. I'm going to throw up, Ron. I'm going to throw up. (laughs) I feel so, this is so bad what we're doing. No, don't, don't, don't don't throw up. Remember, we're in the Dan Turney household, and we have to hashtag grind, hashtag get this bread. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you get inspiration. Mark inspiration. Holy shit. You got to mark inspiration for that. That's very good. Oh, my God. Dude, where was Daryl Ron energy this whole time? <laughs> this whole podcast. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. D'Intern come back. Mrs. D'Intern gives you a teddy bear. She goes, he loved this as a child. It's all soaked with his spit. He would slime oh, all over it all the time. So yeah, there's definitely some, I don't know why you mentioned his DNA, but there's definitely a lot on there. Uh, <laughs> it was something Doug said. He's, he works really hard. I don't know. It's just a, yeah. he's got really. He's, Good to see a man who can get in touch with the softer side 
guy yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a, here's Normally a, at these companies, they'd be like, oh, don't bring your teddy bears. But we're a very open uh, company that likes people a lot and we're good. <laughs> we're so glad yeah, you're exactly We're, we're good Rod, people. I think Rod it's important to know. <laughs> we, we really did like Doug. I mean, we like Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Roll deception with disadvantage. Hey, Ron. Uh, yeah. Did you just get inspired yeah, recently? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember, you said I still have D12s. You guys still have D12s to burn. With an 11, that's 22. So they go, oh, like he's changed. Like he's leveled up in a oh, sense. He just keeps you know? like Daryl's so yeah, sick of how good he is lying in this moment. Like, <laughs> he feels terrible. Anyway, so he's just really detail oriented. He just said, get as much DNA. I know, weird, right? DNA, but you know Doug more than we do. Just, we're always impressed with that. He's kid. always reading uh, these self improvement books and talking about how it we're a he's different person. He's different reading. Per- he used to read. Person. A different person. How yeah. young? How young is he? <laughs> how, how young is he? Oh, Rich yeah. dead, dead Doug. Uh. <laughs> After all this, this month, I was hoping he would come back for his birthday. My boy's turning 20. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay, well, are you okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just- um, anyway. <clears throat> we also have this painting that we commissioned of like the cat that's hanging in there, but it's a little Doug. And you can see uh, they give you a painting that's like a little baby Doug, like adorable, okay. like hanging from a, a branch or whatever. And they go like, <laughs> I'm sure that's lovely, but I don't want to see it. We're just going <laughs> to, yeah. No, look at it. Isn't he so cute? No, we'll take that. We'll take that and his toothbrush and then we'll, we'll and then we'll head <laughs> oh, out yeah, of here. Sure. Can I hand you the toothbrush? Toothbrush. <laughs> uh, so, um, sorry. Um, uh, if we happen to run into him, uh, can we get another slice of bread? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. And they fold up a slice of bread really nice and warm, and they hand that to you as well. There's two of us, though. So. Well, you said it was for It was, it was for, for Doug. And it's for Doug, yeah. It's yeah, for it's Doug. Yeah, it's for Doug. It's <laughs> also me. <laughs> oh, you want to know? Oh, sure, why not? You've all been so polite. Anybody would al- allow our son to be a part of their cool startup? Allow them, allow him to, I assume he's probably got some equity in the company or something? Like, um, that's great. Yeah. So they hand you another slice of bread as well. <clears throat> Anyways, well, <laughs> you two have been lovely, and yeah. uh, we're putting together a team. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, are you? Wait. And both of them, both of their eyes get really big, and they say, are you offering us a job? No, Ron. <laughs> An internship. I think an internship, so it wouldn't be paid, but there would be... Exposure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the two X's. Yes. Um, I mean, does Doug get all the hustle from you two? I, I'm so sorry. I, it's on our family crest, and she pulls down a blank. I was, it's just I was, a resume. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the, 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 our the, motto: the, curriculum vita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in the center, it just says A B H. Always be hustling. Love I lean over to Ron, and I just go, "Okay, so I feel where, where you're coming with this because they they could be you know really good workers. We will have to explain." About Doug, yeah. if we bring them, yeah. But maybe, maybe they'll just go with it if we bring him back to life. That's cool, because like then we brought their son back. You know, I am a businessman, like <laughs> and if I could frame it as some sort of opportunity, I don't know. I just uh, let's say this is a remote position. I've heard that before, but oh. there's no remote involved. Well, it's yeah, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Dan Turn, we have a remote with us for different purposes, but I just want you to let you know that this is a remote position that you can work from home. Oh, oh, fantastic. Could what you would you like us to do? Uh, flyers for Hi, I'm Ron. If you could just. That's already taken care of. More flyers. <laughs> oh, sorry, Glenn. We asked them to. The, you got extra flyers because we asked <laughs> got back to the campsite. <laughs> these these <laughs> ones have been like knitted like on doilies and they're very cute. They recruit twice as many people because they have little flippy tags on the bottom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or you could be like our street team. Like if you just like. They used to do this thing where you put like bumper stickers on and then if you call in because if you saw the car with a bumper sticker, you could win a prize. I don't know what any of those words mean. Yeah. <laughs> Ron, help out. You're the businessman. I'm sorry. Anyways, we better be going. But <laughs> I, I always say that the best part of the entrepreneurial spirit is to be a self-starter. Oh, so let's. You know just, what? You're right. We should figure. We'll we'll show you our initiative. Hey, yes. Not that kind of initiative. Here's 300 gold. Okay. Oh, that's a bonus. So, yeah. I mean, you guys. Yeah, you should work. You worked hard, and and this is just think of it as it's this payment for you and Doug. And uh, all the work you're going to be doing. I oh. feel that's not... Uh, here, 400, here you go. Oh, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I'm going to oh. take more bread, though. I knew... Uh, oh, please do, please. A- absolutely. Uh, I, I knew hustling would pay off eventually. Can I Honey, we some did of it. that back? I, I should have given you 100. You did give me 400. We're actually just going to be leaving now. Keep all the money that you have. We're sorry for your loss. Wait, our what? The loss of gold. The gold. The gold. The gold. The bread. The bread. The bread. The bread. And the gold. Because we're taking back our gold. Okay, bye. And again, and I see you again. And then the door slams. 
on, you're so good. You are great. a good businessman. You're man. great. All right. Well, oh, and we you. should go into business together after this. I don't know what we'd make, but anyways. I've okay. always wanted, uh, yeah, that's. So, so let's see if we can, you know, bring him back. Well, actually, Let's bring back Doug with the rest of the crew. Maybe we'll do it at the campfire. That sounds good. That'll be good. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's why we haven't brought Doug back yet, everybody. <laughs> oh, you guys are waiting. Oh, that's a wild story. <laughs> so that's why Rod has a teddy bear and a toothbrush. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right, should we do well, this? I guess Let's maybe try. ring the teddy bear out. <laughs> oh, yeah, how do we do this? Well, you got witches. Did and- you guys look around at Castle Ravenloft for his ashes? Because it sounded like his ashes might have been. Well, it's fine. Hard cut to a pile of ashes that as you walk away in the background, in the foreground, the ashes just go. <laughs> and they get lost <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> They were there for that long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, this should work. This is like live yeah. DNA still. Yeah. All right. DNA. So uh, Aaron. Ma- Jurassic Park, they had DNA. They didn't have ashes of the dinosaur. This should be fine. Yeah. If we can't bring it back by magic, we'll bring it back by science. <laughs> <laughs> also, we got, if worst case scenario, we can't Bingo. bring Doug back. Doug <laughs> DNA. Nice. <laughs> yes. We got, there's two, the, the parents seem like they could be pretty good interns too, worst case scenario. So. Okay. So Aaron, mom, by the way, Aaron, this is my mom, Autumn. I'll be like, hey. And Aaron's like, oh, hello there. A pleasure to meet you. I, I've heard your son is very fond of trees. Does he get that from you? And she goes, no. <laughs> wow. Seems like you guys got a lot to talk about. Um, <laughs> we didn't talk about a man, though. Uh, that's shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, wait, we did. We talked about you. Shit. Oh, my God. What are the things that you like to it. do, uh, Miss, Miss Oak? Shopping. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> 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 you guys know magic stuff real good. Is there like any runes we should put on the ground if we're going to try to bring Doug back to life here? Can you use this remote that says we're return gonna, on we're it? Gonna, does that seem like a plan to you guys? Like, what do you think? Uh, it's a plan. It seems... Uh, we already spent like 10 hours on it, so it would have been good yeah, to know ahead no, of time. I would have told you beforehand if it was oh. a terrible plan. I, I, What I think is that you got uh, there's a probable chance that it will work. It seems like something that you would have to probably roll... Uh, it's got to be a 15 or higher. Okay. Okay. And we got... Um, okay. Do we have any... Um, Thing that could help us with this, we already did our bardic inspiration. Maybe we just do a quick long rest, really quick, and then if you do a long rest, I will roll on the uh, hour table. Yeah, okay, no, yeah, we're not gonna. Well, we're I not do gonna have another do bardic. Ins- I have one last bardic inspiration I can pull before okay, a long rest. If you want to use it? Who's the best dad at remotes? I think Ron. You weren't there. Ron did a great job. Ron, I think you should press the remote. I, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Who had the best connection to Doug? But I feel like it was you. Yeah, Ron. yeah Ron. You and yeah. Doug had this bond. You know, we really both lived by the bad work-life balance lifestyle. <laughs> Beth is rolling a D20. So Ron, Ron points the remote, his finger hovering above the return button. At 13. Oh, oh. We, we still need more. Roll the bar of inspiration. Let's go. Okay. Seven. Oh. <sighs> so the teddy bear disappears, but not in the way that the remote itself disappeared when you returned it. Nothing. It sort of dissolves away in sort of TV static and fades away before your eyes. And then nothing happens. It's just sort of quiet. Oh, dang, looks like it didn't work. Wait, oh, Doug! Shoot! So you yell, Doug, and from directly behind you, you hear, yeah, sorry, I was a little late with these. And then you turn around and you see Doug there holding four coffees uh, <gasps> in, in his Doug. hands all Doug. together. Doug! Doug! Yeah, that's me. I'm Doug. Who's got the, uh, you got the Frappuccino, right? Did I, did I get the Oh, that's right? me, that's me. The yeah, oat milk? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, uh, uh, a perfect soy chai latte. Oh my gosh, Doug, you're the best. Yeah, oh, I know. Ooh. <laughs> Actually. A, oh no. Uh, uh yeah, I said no milk in this uh <laughs> in this mocha. Okay, so Doug's <laughs> gonna roll a D20. <laughs> he got a one, so he throws himself into the fire. No, oh, no, 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 no I deserve I deserve this. Daryl dives in and pulls him out. Okay. Ow, ow. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'll never forget that milk again. I'm so Doug. sorry. You are such a good intern. You're a good intern, Doug. Not good enough. I didn't get you the milk. It's okay, Doug. We got a lot of other things we're going to be needing you for. We're putting together a team.
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos is Henry Oak. Beth May is Ron Stampler. And Freddie Wong, myself, that's me as Glenn Close. The theme song is All Right by Maxton Waller. Courtney Theron is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Chad Ellis provides additional editing. Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Special thanks this week to Griffin Meehan, who provided us a name that we used in this campaign. And also a special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, but more specifically, Richard Forsberg, Aaron Reese, Haley Welker, Justin Carter. Carter, Isaiah Rothstein, Harrison Stevens, Victoria Green, Austin Murdoch, Freshest Pizza, Brandon Johnson, Bex Woodruff, Shion, Joshua Waugh, Joe Raul, Katie Lee, Mr. Panda Pancake, Nicholas Bros, Brochi, Brosi, Russell Beedling, Seth Turnage, and Phoenix Tiller. You can directly support this show and get ad-free episodes, as well as, at this point, literally hours and hours of bonus content. More bonus content than you can shake a stick at by heading on over to patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. You wonder who Dad Killer was? who we saw in this episode well he showed up in our live show which if you missed you can get access to the vod and audio of by becoming a patron at any level and by the way if you're a dm you can get uncut episodes and anthony's weird dm notes at the touring tier and higher we have a couple of bonus mini series that we play in other systems my humble opinion it's a pretty great value we have multiple levels of support you can cancel at any time check it out all this and more at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads would, you, would it hurt you to just visit the website? Just visit the website. You can also check out our Twitter at Dungeons and Dads. Our subreddit is Dungeons and Daddies. Next episode coming at you August 10th. We will see you then. There was a time when you could read between the lines. You know they never brought you down. Never brought you down. I'm Christian. I like hentai. He exists. <laughs> <laughs>